guys. Hey, hey. Hi. How are you? Welcome to the Mayday Lime Life. Hey, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so sometimes Sharika and I just like to be a little silly and just a little uh, yeah, bit. you know, but it's it's love. It's, it's love and I, I do love you. Yeah, I love you too. All right. <laughs> but welcome to the Mayday Limelight. I am Sharika LeMay. This is Jay Penn, you already know. You know what it is. And this is man, we're almost like halfway through the season. Almost. Almost. almost you know, we're 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 in December. It's holiday season. Oh, yeah. Um we're like the ideas are just kind of flowing. Mm -hmm. Um Is it pilot season right now? Or do we just pass that up? Um, Possibly. Um, but there's things maybe, going yeah. on. You never. I think it is. So yeah. we, I got. I got some pilots. I need to submit. I mean, I. I you know what's funny? You say that. Because mm -hmm. um, if it's pilot season, that means people are auditioning for stuff. Yes, they are. And that's kind of our theme for the conversation yeah, today. Absolutely. Casting and auditioning and stuff. How to get the gig? How to get the gig? And we have a unique guest, a friend of mine, who's going to talk to us about that, Mr. Okay. Joshua Hart. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's your, been your experience? with auditioning and casting? I, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm a scary cat. Mm -hmm. So unless I'm like super confident, like this is it, this is what I, I got this, then I kind of just like, oh, mm -hmm. which I know I need to work on. Yeah. I need to be better. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things I'm going into 2019 with that expectation of, of just being confident and just throwing it all out there. Something's mm -hmm. going to catch. Yeah. Maybe but no. I mean, I in terms of podcasts, I've been applying to a lot of podcasts and okay. things. And you know, okay. your girl can be on BET or MTV. Something, Revo, something. you know, something. You know, we got reels. You know, but um, got reels. <laughs> but it's, it's very scary. Mm -hmm. So I can see how people would be really intimidated yeah. or people can get really into their own heads and think, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. But I, I can imagine it's, it's yeah. hard. But I'm curious to see what it is on the other end yeah. from the casting producers mm -hmm. and directors. Yeah. Um, what about I, you? Well, in 2004, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I might be <laughs> dating myself. In 2004, I auditioned for American Idol that year. I did too! That was the year Carrie Underwood won. I yeah. didn't get anywhere near past like the very first producer, so I was like, well, this, what did I spend the night here in the Superdome for? <laughs> it was back in New Orleans, I remember, okay. and I was like, what the heck, man? I sang that better than like what? I'm not a singer, but I, I mean, I sang in church, you know, whatever. But this is news to me. Yeah, so it, that was nothing. But then um, my other experience auditioning for something, I was auditioning for like a, like an adventure reality show type okay. thing. Um, a network hadn't picked it up yet, but it was a group audition. Okay. And I went in with four friends and we thought we had it in the bag and mm -hmm. the producers loved us and we're chatting and, you know, it was a whole thing. And we were all excited because if you get on the show, and you complete the challenges, you get like, you know, a nice amount of money and okay. stuff like that. Coins. And then we thought we had it locked out. We didn't. We didn't. I don't even know if the show got picked up or oh. whatever. I was like, dang it. You know? But did that like stop you from submitting yourself? In the yeah, future? I mean, like, no, because it wasn't like, that's not really um, something I was going for. Like, it was just kind of more so it was like a friend in our group was like, hey, I have this opportunity. Uh -huh. They need me to find friends who want to do it. And I was like, okay, that sounds exciting. I think we can be ourselves. We can sell ourselves and pitch ourselves to producers. Okay. Let's do it, you know? And, and that's what we tried. We didn't make it, but um, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't, it's okay. I wasn't trying to be on the show, <laughs> but if you want to tell me I'm going to win some money, okay. Money I, is I could, good. Yeah. Money, that's mm, really good. But yeah. speaking of singing, mm. one of the things that we were just talking about it with our studio audience, all of these musicals, revamps yes. of these yes. movies that are happening. And I noticed what they're doing with a lot of these is they're bringing in new and fresh talent. Mm -hmm. I know for sure, I think The Wiz, they had a fresh face nobody's yep. ever heard of. Mm -hmm. So now we have, what, an Edward Scissorhand remake. It's reboot, yeah. Um, the Lion King. Lion King, Aladdin. 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 Mm -hmm. There's some, how do you feel about these musical remakes? Dumbo. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's, it, there's a term that I, um, that I heard and it's specifically targeting millennials and okay. it's, I think it's called retro marketing. Okay. I like uh, that. but basically what it's doing is, is First of all, the millennial audience has a tendency to stay rooted in our younger years, mm -hmm. our, our more childhood years. The and nostalgia we nostalgia of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is, nostalgic marketing. Got it. And so what it is, is we're, we're, we hold on to it. I think our generation hold on to a lot of the things that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is marketers have paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. So right. when they reboot these, these shows and movies and things like that, we're immediately drawn because like, oh my God, I remember that. I can't mm -hmm. wait to see what they do with it. And they know that our generation has kids now yeah and so essentially we want to introduce our, our kids. kids to that ultimately right. 
making them money. You know, right. it's it's selling, and so nostalgic marketing is a big thing. They're and it's like on our they really are. <laughs> but I'm not mad at it though. Um, the one thing I will say is like. Y'all ran out of ran out of ideas. I'm is that you know what I mean? Is that a, an angle there? You know? Yeah, I mean, and to me, some of it is mad corny. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. If you really look at it, though, if you go back and look at some of these movies and shows, they were corny anyway. Awful. We were just kids, and yeah, we loved yeah. it. So you know, it so it's matter. it's you need to see a more modern twist on a few things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm still watching. I'm you know, still watching too. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you guys tune into that. Tell us what you think. But mm -hmm. we're gonna go into this interview. Yes, I'm excited about. It. I'm gonna get my voice together. Oh, cool. I'm gonna have to, you know, I might have to do a little vocal cords for your boy. You, I want to be go audition. For, I'm gonna audition. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, 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 no. But yeah, we're gonna be bringing in Joshua Hot and uh, check it out. All right, guys, so now we've got our boy, Joshua Hart. He is a casting producer, artist, songwriter, my homie, because he's got yes. the same name as me. We known as Josh Square. Oh! So just so y'all know. What's up, Josh? How are you? Hey! Guys? Thank you so much for having me. This is so amazing. I love it. Thank you. I'm just, your whole outfit, your whole energy. He's swaggy. Just came in and he's swaggy. I love it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. So, Thank you. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about with yes. you. Um, we're gonna dive right in. Okay. Um, let's hit just real. Let's let's dive into your your casting experience and um, tell us a little bit about what projects you've worked on as far as the casting goes and um, how did you get into it? Yeah. Well, the gag is I've only been doing this for like three and a half years, so it's not like I have a degree in this mm -hmm. or like I had some type of like supernatural passion about this, like a guiding God force. It was nothing like that. It's super something that I just fell into. Mm -hmm. But um, it stemmed from having the writer's background. Mm -hmm. So I came out here to LA three and a half years ago from Atlanta. Okay. Um, my homegirl was like, you need to really just kind of do this. It would be really a good look for you to know these casting producers when you're doing your gigs because you know mm. I'm an uh, artist and you're trying to model and stuff on the side. Yeah. You to model for Ford and stuff a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it was dope. And I was doing small stuff like Honda commercials, Toyota, but just like PA type of stuff, like right? nothing major. And mm -hmm. then Thank God, her name was Anissa Williams, amazing casting director, love awesome. you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Still my boss to this day. Hey. Um, my boss. <laughs> um, but she um, took me and another girl by the name of Jasmine Michelle under uh, her wing mm -hmm. and just started teaching us the ropes and then just started throwing jobs our way. Yeah. Nice. It just started building from there and then you know, you get another opportunity and things happen and you start applying mm -hmm. and outside of her nest and here I am just yeah. working for some pretty cool people. That's amazing. Yeah. So mentorship was really... Yeah, apparent. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. She is a strong black woman. So mm -hmm. me coming out here in Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, it was really lucky for me to have somebody like that to kind of take me under her. But you know what they say about luck? They say it's just you being at the right time, at the right moment, and having the right preparedness yeah. for it. Yeah, you definitely have to have a hunger. You, yeah. If, if, if you don't have, like, pep in your step, you know, if you, if you don't have that, what can I do next right. type of attitude, yeah. it's not gonna work for you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's definitely. not gonna work. So in regards to casting, what has been one of the like surprising aspects of it for you? Is there something you wish you would have known while you were on the look to being casted now that you do the casting? Yeah, um, I wish, I okay, being on the other side of it, I, I wish I would have just been myself mm. and relaxed mm -hmm. because that's what we're looking for. Okay. We're not looking, we can tell when you acting. We can tell when you mm -hmm. being yourself. Mm -hmm. You really not. It's just this authenticity. authenticity. And then also it's not anything specific at all. Okay. And it is very much so, but it's mm -hmm. not like okay, she has to do this, this, he has to do this, this, this. 
No, it just has to be, this is what we're looking for. This is the energy that we're trying to get from the character or mm -hmm. the commercial or the girl or the model mm -hmm. or whatever. And if that essence is or isn't felt, that's kind mm -hmm. of the gauge. Mm -hmm. So don't take it personal. Exactly. <laughs> In other words. <laughs> so you found some pretty uh, amazing talent on a very hit show uh, called The Four. This is The Four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I'm a fan of the show. And, and when I, I connected you with, with a few earlier this year and you told me, oh yeah, I casted this person and this, I was like, you put them on this show? Dope. And you know, to see people that got, you know, pretty far in the competition, mm -hmm. just knowing that, you know, my homie here, Hang put them on, like, that's, that's amazing. How was that process? It was amazing, nice. not even gonna lie. I, I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, I've never done anything like that, mm. but I'd worked with some of those people before. Okay. Um, I'd worked with um, individuals um, and have met some of the executive staff like mm -hmm. Mario Winans mm. and like uh, Eric Dawkins. Mm. It's just like amazing. These are like music people now, right. time, which is still that music background. Yeah. All right. So. The four mm -hmm. started off with nobody. Mm -hmm. There were no judges, there were no nothing. It was just this idea and it was corny. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. They called, there was this thing up on the site, on the site that most casting producers go to look for up and coming work. Okay. And I, I was like, oh, it's a music show. At least that's in my vein. That'll be really easy. I know everybody in music is mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And I applied and they were like, all right, we're looking for these really cool singers and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, that's cool. You guys are going to find some good singers, but I'm going to find some singers. Singers. It's the difference, you guys. And they were like, ooh. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, guys. I And I, and I guess because I'm really goofy, mm -hmm. I'm really soft-spoken sometimes, mm -hmm. um, I don't like to boast or flaunt or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I was like, hey guys, I've worked with some really cool people. I'm pretty vested and vetted in the music industry. Yeah. I, I would be really a good candidate for this. Awesome. And they were like, okay, cool. So then we'll, we'll hit you back up. And I didn't hear from them for like three fucking weeks. Oh. Excuse my language. And I was like, okay, didn't get that job. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Life goes on. I'm about to just figure something else out. Mm -hmm. Then I get a call. They're like, hey, so can you start whenever date? Mm -hmm. So then fast forward. We're working, working, working. I'm pitching all these people. I want to say a month before January, which is when the show aired of this year, mm -hmm. the very first season, even though we've been casting since the summer of oh, 2017. Yeah. We um, it, We didn't have any judges until December, which was the month before. Oh, really? That's crazy. So the month before is when we because the whole show was like, we're not gonna have any celebrity judges. We're just gonna have That's cool, crazy. isn't it right? Because you had like the celebrity judges. Yeah. Like we're talking DJ Khaled, Puffy, Meg like, trainer. Meg, I like mean, come on. Yeah. That's crazy. Heavy oh, hitters in the biz. so hard because <laughs> that's what I said. I said, how do you I go from, from none trying, to all? No judges. We're just trying to have a whole bunch of salmon cows on this thing. This is just about the artists and that. That's bah, bah. interesting. And then they're like, yeah, guys, so we got DJ Khaled. We got Diddy and wow. Megan Trainor, man. And then we got Charlie Walk, man. I'm like, so you guys did the opposite of what we were trying to do, but that's still cool because these are amazing people. They're influential. Mm -hmm. um, they're very well respected. I so have a in. question, because this is something that's really been on my mind in regards to these different <clears throat> reality-based competitions, singing shows. I know there's some artists that are like hardcore serious artists and they kind of shun these types of shows because they think that they're more gimmicky or they feel as though the, the winner's already predetermined and it won't really do them any good. What are, what are your thoughts about that perspective? Well, my thing is this, right? They're, 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 that is real. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like it's not. Okay. It's a real concern. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> going on just another miracle-round of something. But right. then you have to also look at it like this. Um, this is a brand new show. This mm -hmm. is not like Idol or The Voice where even though we do have Khaled, Megan, and Diddy, these are like moguls, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and producers, mm -hmm. by the way. Whereas The Voice, even though I respect those shows, I have nothing against them. Mm -hmm. These are more like 
average, everyday, regular, regular people. That's true. Who can sing, who are singers, who can blow down the house. But the four differentiates itself because these are people who are in the industry right. already. Yeah. Right. These are people who have been doing this for some time, who have yeah. opened up for Megan Trainer, who mm -hmm. have opened up for your A-listers. Yeah. Little Mix. You know, right. we had a girl open up for Ariana Grande. She was. Uh, I, I have friends that I've submitted who sing background for like Jesse J and sing mm -hmm. background for J Lo. So this is that opportunity for them to get out of that mm -hmm. type of deal. Even though they can still go back to that if they want. Right. This is a platform at the yeah. end of the right. day. Mm -hmm. But the thing is this. Let, let's, let's think about it. If the show was a label in the real world. Mm -hmm. It's all about what you're willing to do before you get to that label and then after you get signed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whatever the work that you're coming and bringing to the table, that's the work that you're working with. Right. That's your ethic. That is the sound. That is what people are, what you're ready to present to the world. Mm -hmm. If that ain't refined, then yeah, you're gonna have some hiccups regardless of if the show catapulted you or not. Right, the, right. The, it, it, I feel like that's the biggest misconstrued thing about artists nowadays, especially now, and now I'm about to divvy a bit, mm -hmm. where the industry is right now in general. Mm -hmm. It's just this whole like quick pop tart artist thing. And there's no story. And there's right. no story, there's no talent. There is no mood behind it. Everybody sounds regular, yeah, regular, regular. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be very honest. There mm -hmm. is no, Pizzazz out there now. Uh, now, if there were no marketing involved, would you still mess with them? Mm -hmm. mm. But it's funny how you mention that because it seems like marketing is key. Now we're looking at okay, you have to have this amount of followers, you have to have this amount of views on you your have YouTube. This type of brand, you know. And... So it's it's really interesting that you say that. It is, but at the same time, you know, if you're just popular on Instagram, you're just popular on Instagram, baby. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's not a check because people are getting checks on Instagram okay. now. It is not a game. Children. But we we love the conversation, and I know we can talk about this all day. Yeah. But for time's sake, do you have any like that one? piece of advice to anyone who's watching who's maybe looking into being casted on one of these types of shows or maybe okay, so looking but who wants to become a cast or yeah because yeah. it seems like being a caster you have to get casted to be a caster so I, 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 i'm sure it certainly helps yeah um okay uh refine your craft mm -hmm. refine your craft before you come in front of anyone and then be confident in what you're doing mm -hmm. do not try to sound like nobody because we don't care we don't care. That sounding like another is just like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because you'll never get it. You'll never reach it. That's that's them. Mm -hmm. Refine your own self. It's different to have influences, Aaliyah and all that stuff. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But you are not them. So you cannot treat yourself in that manner and say, these are the type of songs that I sing per se. Because we may say, we want you to sing something else. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to be fluid with that. or know yourself your sound because you've been refining it right know that so much that you say okay give me a moment and let me study okay these are the songs that i'm able to do or i can switch these songs and make it sound like this and make it go well with my voice and my tone yeah because yeah. that's what a real musician does yeah um for those who are interested in being a casting producer you just got to be the plug in some type of form yeah mm -hmm. um these networks want to know like, this is how the call goes. I'm asleep. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Oh, hi, Josh. How's it going? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. And then, so we're doing a brand new show. We're really excited. Oh, my God. We're doing a brand new show. It's going to be with Bravo. And we're looking for people who are in the LGBT community. And we're also looking for individuals who are in-house and in ballroom scene. Um, do you know anybody? You seem like the man. I know that you're really around town. And then my response is, of course I know everybody. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, I was out at the club last night, bro. What are we looking for? We're looking for dancers. Oh my God, I know so many dancers. <laughs> <laughs> Vulgars. 
Hands down, absolutely. I'm from Atlanta, so I know so many vulgars. I can go ahead and call some choreographers, see if, what their connection is to Los Angeles, X, Y, and Z. Actually, what I can do is I can get on that right now. When's the start date? I don't know, none of <laughs> <laughs> But I know people who know the people. Right, and then so maintaining relationships is a big thing too. It's a very big thing, and it's also very a very draining thing. Yeah. But it's a very big thing. It's a it's it's a big thing to do. I say draining only because, as a casting producer, you have to continue to network. Right. That's how you continue your so. your files. It's a big deal. Yeah. After a while, you start getting jobs back to back. Mm -hmm. You start submitting the same people. You have now your own files, and now the only way to be a casting director. Amen. Damn. Okay. okay. It's a bag exchange. Uh, we can get the bag. We gonna secure the bag, but we're gonna have our own little offline conversation with him. But you make sure you guys are tuned into what he's doing. Where can we find you? Your social. Don't bug them, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> bug me, y'all. Uh, I am uh, Joshua Hart. So that's Joshua, H-E-A-R-T, like your heart. Your heartbeat. Like your heartbeat. Yes. Um, and uh, you may catch me on there being goofy. Um, super introvert, super goofball. And... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for coming on. And thank you so dropping much. Dropping the Joshua. gems. And we hope everybody learned something from him. Make sure you're following him. Make sure you're following LeMayday Limelight on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Apple Podcasts. If you're listening, we love you. And shout out to our director and our producers and our special audience members. And thank you to Opulent Studios. <laughs>